Welcome back to the bench. Today I have a Class D TPA 3116 board. It's about time I get around to doing a 3116, a very popular Class D series of amplifier ICs, and I uh, haven't done one yet, so this will be a first, and hopefully it turns out good. This board was sent to me from Banggood to review, and uh, they let me select which board I want to review. I just, you know, I don't want to have a random board sent to me and expect to be reviewed. They give me the option of, you know, a low-cost audio amp board to review. So I picked a couple of them out and um, want to review them. I must say that even though they are sending them to me to review, I'm going to call it as I see it. If it's a bad product, then I'm going to say it. So, you know, it's just like all my other reviews. Okay, so on to the board. This board cost $11.70 US. It is a mono board. It is not stereo. And kind of like that and I'll explain why. I see two decent sized output coils. If you remember my last Class D amp board review, these real small coils that got really hot. And hopefully these do not get really hot. I see a very nice sized heat sink. If you watch my channel, I do complain that a lot of these Class D boards don't even include a heat sink and the chip gets very hot during testing. Even though it is Class D, it still has to dissipate heat. And for one channel, seeing a nice large heat sink like this is very good. They claim this is 150 watts, but it's rated to accept 12 to 26 volts. And you're not going to get that kind of power from you know a 26 volt supply. They don't specify the load impedance but I would think that it could handle 4 ohm loads. It has 6 uh, power supply filter caps, shot key reverse protection diode on the supply connection here. And what's really interesting here they have an NE5532 preamp IC and a level control. So that's pretty interesting there pre-amplifying the signal before it goes into the IC. Maybe that will help with that hiss noise I find that about every Class D board has. And it might provide enough gain for a headphone type music player. I also like the green connectors. The blue ones are pretty awful, but these green ones are much nicer for accepting wire and screwing down tightly. So without further ado, let's get this thing hooked up, powered up, and give you a music sample. Okay, it's all hooked up. Start at 12 volts. In standby here, it's only drawing 30 milliamps, so that's pretty good. But, listen to that. It seems to have quite a bit of hiss. So that may or may not be a problem depending on the efficiency of your speakers. Uh, let's give you a little sample of the music here. Okay, where's the bass? Where's the beef? If you're old enough, you might remember that commercial from the 80s. Where's the bass? Uh, this thing, there's no bass. Okay, have the output connected to the scope. We'll measure the frequency response. Okay, we're at 20 hertz. And the output's pretty low right now, and it's increasing. Yeah, there's a definite high pass effect going on here. 
<clears throat> and now we're up to 1.7 volts RMS and still growing. Okay, it recycled. Let's try, uh, let me find my 20 to 20 kilohertz sweep. Wow. Let me restart that. Oh, it starts low. See, we're at 1K already, and it seems to level off at around 3 volts. So this definitely has a very strong high pass filter effect. It's taking the base out of the equation here. Uh, why do they do that? So after hacking around a bit, this is what I've come up with. I removed these two ceramic one microfarad capacitors, C7 and C8. C7 was of inadequate value. It is the input coupling capacitor to the op amp stage, this preamp stage here. And this is configured as an inverting amplifier. And inverting amplifiers tend to have lower impedance. So you'd need a lot larger value coupling capacitor. And C8 is the coupling capacitor between the op amp and the power amp stage. Its value is okay. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump from the input, skip over this op amp stage, and go right into the amplifier's input. The reason for that is I found my music player has plenty of output to drive this thing. In other words, this power amp stage has plenty of gain. Um, if you find you don't have enough gain, you could just replace C7 and leave C8 alone and use the op amp. This thing has a gain of 10. It's just way over the top. A lot more gain than necessary, I think. So this is a um, electrolytic 4.7 microfarad that should give us decent frequency response, which we'll try out. And the audio nerds say that electrolytics are bad. Well, not necessarily. You know, they can give distortion at the uh, pole frequency, but you know, in the pass band, you're not going to have that issue with distortion. The voltage drop across the capacitor in the pass band is going to be very low. It's not going to be a problem here. So, with this removed, and you know, I properly should remove the entire IC, but I'm not going to. It's pretty much out of the circuit, it just draws some supply power. And we'll go ahead and uh, measure the frequency response now. Okay, we'll start the test. 10 to 100 hertz sweep. See, we hit 20 right there, around 5.6 volts. And it still does increase somewhat. 30 around 6 volts. Okay, so we got our frequency response back. It's not perfectly flat, but now we should have bass. I think something under the heat sink a component is still rolling it off a little bit. But, you know, it's pretty minor roll off compared to what it was. Let's hook it up and see what it sounds like. Okay, I have the speaker hooked up. One thing I noticed right off, noise is much less. Still a little bit there, but not nearly as bad. So uh, here's the uh, music sample. This camera's audio compression, if it makes the bass sound any more than it was before, but 
much better than it was, that's for sure. Okay, I guess it's time to proceed on with the power tests. Okay, I wired in the 4 ohm load. And the way this hack works, you can still use this control to adjust the level. So, let's see what we can get here. So we're at 1 kilohertz. And that's clipping right there. So we can back that out of clipping. Very nice symmetrical clipping. Uh, we'll say 7.53 volts RMS. So we're getting 14.17 watts, which at 12 volts is actually very good. Here's the harmonic distortion using the spectrum analyzer. Like always, the 1 kilohertz fundamental, 4.5 kilohertz, 1% pilot signal. And it's pretty clean. There is a little tiny notch of a third harmonic. But other than that, it's pretty clean. By the way, the little oscillation you see here and at the bottom, that's my metal screwdriver touching the potentiometer. When I take it away, it's perfectly clear. If Output filtering on this amp is very good. You don't see any of the uh, switching coming through. And here are the output power tests with the power supply voltage at 12 volts, 4 ohm loads. Again, we got the 14.17 watts. Power supply at 18 volts, we got 31.36. And look at this at 24 volts, 4 ohm loads, we got. 54.76 clean watts of output. That is pretty darn good. 8 ohm loads, power supply at 12 volts, we got around 7 watts. 18 volts, we got around 17. And at 24 volts, we got 31.6 watts. Quiescent current draw was 30 milliamps, which is pretty good. The heat sinking, I am impressed with. This is the first time I tested one of these Class D boards and the heat sink didn't get boiling hot. It stayed uh, very manageable even at the highest output power measurement. And another interesting thing, the minimum supply voltage was 5 volts. It was still giving me a clean sine wave at 5 volts, even somewhat below, but it started clipping on one side first. So if you want to run this thing at a lower voltage, say 6 to 9 volts, you can certainly do that. You won't get a lot of output power, but it does have its versatility. You know, you have to wonder what they were thinking when they designed this thing. Why did they think they needed this preamp? Why did they set the gain so high? Why did they use too small a value capacitor to make the bass response so awful? You know... With too much gain, too much noise. I was able to perform all the tests bypassing the preamp using my music player. I didn't even need my little preamplifier. In this modified condition, it's a pretty nice amp. So if you want to purchase one of these things, uh, purchase it using the link in the description. That'll help me out. You know, I don't benefit directly, but it might allow me to get more products in for review. So that'll wrap up the review of this Class D amplifier board. Thanks for watching.